So if you want to find out the value of the function at particular time, if you want to find out the value of this function, you know the value of the function before the time step or before the step. So I'm going to call this, this value as x1, this value as x2. So f of x2, which means the value of the function at point x2 is equal to f of x1 plus the straight line approximation where this distance is delta x, which is nothing but uh, f of x so multiplied by delta x, which is nothing but df by dx or also the slope of line. Now, please understand, to find out the value of f of x2, this must be known. This you can find out because what you will do is you will take the derivative and then you will substitute the value of x1 and then multiply that by the variation. This is known. Same thing would happen if you have p ox x, which is the position of the end effector, which is function of theta. What you can do is you can find out, assuming the initial value is zero, I can find out the x dot is equal to df by d theta multiplied by d theta by dt, which is nothing but df by d theta times theta dot. In the last class, we extended this logic when Px is function of multiple joint variables, theta 1, theta 2, and say theta 3. Then if I want to find out Px dot, the equation is df by d theta 1 multiplied by theta 1 dot plus df by d theta 2, theta 2 dot plus df by d theta t, theta 3 dot. Now, what does this mean? It means this is the change with respect to the variable theta 1 and theta 1 dot is the change in the variable itself. So imagine instead of a straight line, you have a surface and then you are trying to find out the slope in three different directions. Please understand since there are three independent variables, so these are independent variables. So you can't take a full derivative. It needs to be the partial derivative. The partial derivative means that when we perform this derivative, all other independent variables are treated constant. Everyone understood this? Now, the question is, how would this be used if you want to find out the robot velocity and robot position? Let's start with a very simple case, wherein this is the first revolute joint, this is the second revolute joint, and here is the end effector. And we looked at this case earlier. So this is the first frame. This is the second frame. And this is the third frame. So this is the zeroth frame. This is the first frame. This is the second frame. And I'm going to call this maybe uh, L1. I'm going to call this L2. If you look from top, we are going to observe that we have this theta 1 and we have this as theta 2, where this L1 
and L2. If you recollect, we derived the equations, we derived the equations for Px and we did this manually and we used MATLAB. It is L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. We also did Py, which is L1 sine theta 1 plus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. If you want to take the derivative, Px dot will be L1 is a constant, derivative of cosine theta is minus sine theta multiplied by theta 1 dot plus uh, L2 cosine theta 1 theta 2 needs to take, we need to take the derivative, it is going to become L2 minus sine theta 1 plus theta 2 theta 1 dot plus L2 again, uh, I have two derivatives. So basically what needs to happen is when I take the first derivative, I need to keep the terms constant and I take the second derivative, I need to keep the terms constant. So I would have to do minus sine theta one plus theta two multiplied by theta two down. Same thing here. Derivative of first one, L1 cosine theta 1 plus uh, sorry, L1 cosine theta 1 theta 1 dot plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 theta 1 dot plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 2. Now, if I want to write this equation into matrix vector form, px dot dy dot is equal to, I'm going to have theta 1 dot theta 2 dot. So what I'm going to do is, please note, this is theta 1 dot, theta 1 dot. So first term is going to be minus L1 sine theta 1 minus uh, basically L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. And then here, is going to be L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Here, this is going to be same thing as L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. And this will become L2 cosine theta 1. So this guy is the Jacobi. So now, how would you evaluate the velocities in a discrete time? Initially, say if your theta value is zero, you would substitute the theta value is equal to zero, multiply those by theta one, theta two dot, you'll get p x dot and p y dot. Then what's going to happen is your theta values are going to change. So theta 1 and theta 2 will be different. And then you substitute those values in this J matrix and find out Px dot and Py dot. 
and numerically you would perform these iterations so that finally you would have all the values of ex dot and ey dot. So this is the translational velocity. Now, next thing which I want to talk about is if you look at this robot arm, this robot arm, in addition to translational velocities, it has rotational velocities. And to find the rotational velocity, we have to use the concept again similar to Jacobian. But before we go there, I just want to tell you one thing if Px dot and Py dot are with respect to zeroth frame. So, which means the x dot and p y dot are inertial velocities. Inertial velocities means the velocities which are with respect to inertial. Inertia means resistance to move, fixed frame. So, these are the velocities with respect to uh, inertial frame. These are absolute velocities. And when we try to perform any dynamic analysis, we prefer to work in the absolute velocities or in absolute reference frame because then the equations are more uh, sort of easy to apply. Now, with this, understand Px dot is the velocity of the end effector above x1. So, for an example, uh, this is v, this is x, this is y. So this is the velocity in this direction and py dot is the velocity in this direction. So if you look at, this is going to be your velocity in x direction, this is going to be in your velocity in the y direction. Now the next question is, how we find out the rotational velocity? And for rotational velocities, I want you to understand this equation. Omega x, omega y. So this is the rotation velocity in the inertial frame. There are two joints. So joint one, theta one, and joint two, theta two. So the equation is zero r zero. 0, 0, theta 1 dot plus 0, R1, 0, 0, theta 2 dot. Now, what does this mean? So, remember when we perform the forward kinematics, the way we did it is 0, H2 is equal to 0, H1 plus uh, multiplied by 1 h2. So that is how we got. If you look at 0 h1, this matrix was 0 r1. And then we had 1 here, zeros here, and there was px, py, pz. Multiplied by 1 h2 is 0, 1 r1 r2 0 and then there were px, py, pz and 1 here. So when we performed this multiplication, we got the overall transformation that talks about the orientation and that talks about the translation. Now please understand that this guy is identity. The rotation of the first frame with respect to first frame is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, oh, sorry, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Multiplied by 0, 0, theta, 1 dot. I just want to add omega z. So, because we have omega x, omega y, and omega z. Now, next part is 0 R1. 
you remember what was 0 R1? So suppose sine theta 1 minus sine theta 1 sine theta 1 cosine theta 1 0 0 1 0 0 and this is 0 0 theta 2 1. Do you agree with me? So when you perform this multiplication, and I want you to understand, this is the joint velocity in first frame. So this is, if you think about it, this is the joint velocity, actually, even though it's first frame, joint velocity is expressed about the zero thing. So zero thing. Theta two dot is the joint velocity about first plane. One thing I want you to understand, and this is where the students make mistake, that this is theta two dot. Theta two dot, please understand, is about the first frame. So this is the zeroth frame. This is the first frame, and this is the second frame. Theta two dot is about the, the first frame. Everyone understood this. So this velocity must be paired with this. This velocity must be paired with this. Everyone understood this. Once again, I repeat, because when the robot arm becomes complex, there's something easier to forget. So zero, zero theta one dot, this is the velocity theta one dot. If you see theta one dot, is about this guy. Theta 2 dot is about this guy. And there is no theta 3 dot. Everyone understood this? So theta 1 is about 0, theta 2 about 1. So we get this expression. So when you multiply, this expression is going to be first row first column 0, first row second column 0, first row third column theta 1 dot. You agree with me? Plus when you multiply the first row first column, this is going to be zero. Second row first column, zero. Third row first column, theta two dot. Are you with me? Omega x, omega y, omega z. Now, what does this mean? I need to add these. And this expression becomes omega x is equal to 0, omega y is equal to 0, and omega z is equal to theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot. Are you with me so far? Now, I want to explain in the context of this robot, what does it mean? So, first and foremost, we perform the forward kinematics. We found the position, we took the derivative of the position vector dx, dy, dz, took the derivative and found the expression for the translational velocity. Translational velocities are velocities in x direction and velocities in y direction. Now, when I want to find out the rotational velocities, I have to use the rotation transformation. So the rotation transformation is the rotation transformation of the first frame with respect to theta one dot. This is zero R zero. Zero R zero is an identity matrix. Then this is zero R one multiplied by theta two dot. So what it means finally when I got the expression, I got, please understand, omega x is equal to zero, omega y is equal to zero, and omega z is the angular velocity of the first joint plus angular velocity of the second joint. Once again, I repeat. Imagine that this is the robot arm. This is my first joint. This is my second joint. If I want to find out, and imagine you are looking from top, then you are trying to find out the position vector. First, 
you have L1 cosine theta and L1 sine theta, and then you have L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2, L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. But if you look at the angular velocity, angular velocity of the end detector, then you are considering the inertial frame. Angular velocity of the end detector, then you are considering the inertial frame is the angular velocity of the first link plus angular velocity of the second link. Does it make sense? So what it means, imagine if theta one dot would have been zero, or if I fix this link, if I fix this link, this link is not rotating, what would be the angular velocity of the end effector? Clearly, this angular, this end effector cannot rotate about x, cannot rotate about y, only way it can rotate it about c. So if my theta one dot is zero, the end effector angular velocity will only be theta two dot. Everyone understood this? If theta two dot is zero, then the end effector angular velocity will only be theta one dot. Everyone understood this? So it's not like this. Or it's not like this. If both of these joints are moving, then the total velocity is going to be the sum of theta one dot and theta two dot. Everyone understood this? So remember this because this will be very, very useful. So whenever you find out the joint velocities, what you need to do is you need to find out the rotation matrices and then multiply the appropriate rotation matrices uh, by theta, theta dots. Now, some of you may ask me, and this is an important question and I want to answer this uh, because I know that you will, will uh, have this question. So what about uh, say something like 0 R2. So 0 R2 is not in the picture. Why 0 R2 is not in the picture? Because we don't have any joint or any angular velocity that is after the, the R2. So if imagine if I would have had one more joint, then 0 R2 will come in the picture. But since there is no other joint after this, 0 R2 will not come in the picture. So remember this. So once again, when you are finding out the angular velocities, this is theta 1 is theta 1 rotation is about 0, th, z0. So theta 1 dot is about z0. So this is about z0. Theta 2 dot is about z1. So since this rotation is about z0, you will do 0 r0. Since this rotation is about z1, you will do 0 r1. Everyone understood this? Remember this, I have seen students making mistakes. Now, if I want to express this as a Jacobian, what would I do? I can write this something like 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot. And you will have omega x, omega y, and omega z. So if you multiply first row, first column, second row, first column, third row, first column, you will get the same answer. Yeah. So, so our uh, joints are always rotating around the DX. So for all robots, the X and Y will be same. So that is the beauty of the sign convention that we have used. Since our joints, and this is a good point, I should have emphasized that since our joints are like aligned with the Z axis, all the motion will be captured in the Z direction. Yeah. You will not have anything over here. You will not have anything over here. After you perform multiplication, it may so happen that some of these terms will get populated. But once you formulate your joints, theta one dot and theta two dot must always be above. Everyone understood it. And zero R zero is always identity. One R one is identity. 2R2 two two is identity. 
everyone is successful. And uh, later, once we understand the dynamics part of it, I will show you. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of the scripts, uh, in those scripts, I have added the additional part where the MATLAB will perform these calculations for you directly. So, so we don't. So for simple robots, it is easier to calculate the joint velocities and Jacobian by hand. But when you have a very complicated robot with multiple joints, then the easiest way to do that is use MATLAB. Everyone understood this? This is the Jacobian. And this is the Jacobian. Everyone understood this? Now, Next part, which I want to talk about, is something called as the static force analysis. Before I do static force analysis, I'm sure everyone took the statics class, right? Long time ago. So can someone tell me the conditions of equilibrium? Conditions of equilibrium. Summation of forces in x direction is equal to zero. Summation of forces in y direction is equal to zero. Summation of forces in z direction is equal to zero. Summation of moment about x is equal to zero. Summation of moment about y is equal to zero. Summation of moment about z is equal to zero. These are called as the conditions. of static equilibrium. You remember you did something like that? Now let me ask you a tricky question, a tricky question. Did, did you study method of virtual work? Did you study method of virtual work? So, and this is actually the last chapter in the statics textbook. Every static textbook has it. Pierre Johnson, I don't know if you use some Indian editions, maybe RK, Kurmi, or uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, there are so many books. So there is this method of virtual work. And this is a very powerful method. what is this method of virtual work? The method of virtual work states that work and energy are equivalent. So energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Only it can change the form. So what that means is imagine that if you have a link, if you have a link, and this link is fixed at one end. And maybe there is some force, say Fy, and some other force Fx acting on this link. And what I want to know is I want to find out, I want to find out what is the torque at the hinge. What I can do is there is an easy way to find this. So please understand. Imagine this torque is balancing the external forces. So we have some force in x direction. We have some force in y direction. So Fy is pushing it down. Fx is pushing towards left. So there will be some resultant. But what is happening is this torque is keeping this link stationary, the static equilibrium. If I want to find out the value of T, what I can do is I can actually use conditions of equilibrium and then find out the torque. And, and I will show you how you can do it. Or what you can do is you can use something called as the method of virtual work. 
So let me let me first set up the problem. So if I were to use the conditions of equilibrium, so first and foremost, I have I'm gonna set up my coordinate system. This is my x. This is my y. And then I'm gonna write down. So make so I would have to draw the free body diagram. So this is the free body diagram. What is the meaning of free body diagram? I have to free the robot link or this link from this joint. As soon as I free the joint, as soon as I free the joint, virtual forces come in the picture. So what will happen is I'm going to show my forces f of y like this, f of x like this. And then I'm going to assume, okay, I'm going to assume that the joint reaction, which is Ry and joint reaction Rx is going to be something like this. Have Ry and Rx, this joint reaction, something like this. As soon as I free this from hinge, what I have is, as soon as I free this from hinge, I'm gonna get this moment on this. So I have uh, two forces and one moment. And same thing is going to happen over here. So what we have is, I will have Rx, I will have Ry, and then I'm gonna have counterclockwise moment M over here. Now, what does that mean? It means as soon as I connect this link to this joint, as soon as I connect this link to this joint, these reaction forces will cancel each other. Rx will cancel with the Rx going towards left. Ry going down will cancel the Ry going up. Everyone understood this? And what I would do is I would get uh, this figure that's shown over here. So I can apply summation of forces is equal to zero, summation of uh, moments is equal to zero, and try to find out the value of uh, these moments and these forces. The alternative way of doing this, alternative way of doing this is work is given as F times delta X, which is force multiplied by displacement. And the work is also given by torque or moment multiplied by delta theta. So torque multiplied by delta theta. So since energy is neither created nor be destroyed, I can actually equate the work due to translational forces to the work you done due to rotational forces or torque, and I will have Ft delta x is equal to tau t delta theta. Now, please understand delta x is nothing but the Jacobian times delta theta. And I want to specify this equation. Look here. Theta one dot and theta two dot are nothing but delta thetas. They are teeny tiny change in the values of theta. We are taking the derivative with respect to time, but this entire expression can very well be written as delta px, delta py is equal to Jacobian delta theta one and delta theta two. So which means if I say the time step is constant, then teeny tiny change in the position is equal to the Jacobian multiplied by the teeny tiny change in theta. Teeny tiny change in the uh, py is Jacobian multiplied by the teeny tiny change in theta one and theta two. Everyone understood this? So what that means, is this expression is delta 
delta x, which is the change in the position. Is equal to Jacobian multiplied by change in angular position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this value here. Delta x j times delta theta is equal to delta theta. Now please understand delta theta is common on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So what I have is I have f transpose Jacobian is equal to tau of the torque T. And remember, if we have a B, so A transpose B, if I want to take the transpose of it, this is going to be B transpose multiplied by A transpose transpose. So what that means is this is nothing but B transpose A. So this equation is going to be J transpose F transpose transpose is equal to tau. In other words, tau is equal to J transpose F. This is a very, very important equation. This is a very, very important equation. Are you with me so far? Okay, next part is I'm going to show you that this equation is so. Before I actually do the math, I want you to understand the practical implementation of what this means. Remember, method of virtual work is an alternate way to find out the forces and the moment. And here is the logic. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, it can only change form. If you look at the robot or if you look at the structure, there is no dissipating element, there is no damper. So, which means the work done by the forces needs to be compensated or cancelled by the work done by the torque. What is the work done by the forces? Force multiplied by displacement is the work done. Do you agree with me? Work done by torque is torque multiplied by angular displacement. So that is the equation that is used. Force multiplied by linear displacement is equal to torque or moment multiplied by the angular displacement. Linear displacement is Jacobian multiplied by the angular displacement. So when you substitute that equation in here, finally you get this tau which is the torque is equal to J transpose S. What is the practical application? Imagine you have a robot arm, okay? And on this robot arm, uh, you attach an end effector. And that end effector is heavy. Imagine if you have free spinning motors, if you have free spinning motors, what would happen is, as soon as you attach the weight, the robot arm would drop down. Do you agree with me? So, which means you need to hold that weight. How would you hold that weight? Please understand. This end effector does not apply torque. It has forces, maybe in y direction, maybe in x direction. You can't apply forces because you don't have linear actuators. You have motors. So, which means this downward work done by this weight needs to be compensated by the upward work that is done by the motor. You agree with me? Which means you want to apply some torque that will cancel out this downward effect or downward uh, motion of this end effector. And this Jacobian tells me what is the torque requirement so that the external load can be supported. 
Now, what that means? It means as soon as you have a robot arm, once you add an air defector, the motor will start exerting torque, and this torque magnitude will be calculated by calculating the transpose of Jacobian at that point. And this is extremely useful. Why is it useful? Is imagine if you have a robot arm that you want to move very slowly from point A to point B. There are some applications where the robot arm needs to move very slowly. So when the robot arm is moving slowly, the inertial effects are negligible. It means the accelerations are close to zero. If you don't have inertia effects, you don't have inertial effects. So what it means is if you want to move this robot arm that is loaded from point A to point B, I can do that by changing the magnitude of torque at the joints. What would I do? I would find out the Jacobian from the angles. So you will have a sensor that will measure the angle. So you will find the Jacobian from the angles. Multiply that with the magnitude of the force, effect, and Fy, and then apply Tx or T1 and T2 that will move the robot. So you will add the sequences of T1, T2, T1, 1, T1, 2, T1, 3, T2, 3, and so on. And that way the robot can go from position A to position B. This equation is only valid or this approach is only valid when the robot arm is moving slowly or inertial effects can be ignored. But the other option is, imagine in many cases that you want to hold the load. So the robot needs to carry the load and then just hold it. So you need to apply some magnitude of torque, some non-zero magnitude of torque. How much torque would you apply? If you apply too much torque, then the robot arm will move. If you add too little torque, the robot arm would drop. So if you want to hold an end effector or a weight in position, you find out the torques that you have to apply at joints within this equation. Everyone understood this? So that how can calculate the force So very simple example. Imagine you have an end effector. End effector has the weight. And that weight is moving up and down. So every time the weight is because of gravity. So you would just have value of F1. So Fx is going to be zero. So in this expression, this is going to be something like tau one, tau two is equal to J Fx F1. Since Fx is equal to zero, there is a non-zero value of Fy, then you will get some values of tau one and tau two. You will understand this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is in next 15 20 minutes, I'm going to work out the math for the two degree of freedom robot arm. I will not ask you to work out this math for two degree of freedom. I will not ask you to do the virtual work for as a matter of fact for any robot arm. But if you use a computer software internally, this is what is doing to find out the values of torques to find the holding torque or limiting torque or uh, uh, maybe uh, the maximum torque that needs to be applied so that the weight doesn't run away. So remember this, this is a very important equation and this comes from the method of virtual work. Method of virtual work means energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Similarly, energy and work they are one and the same. Work cannot be created, work cannot be destroyed. So if the external force is going to do some work, then the internal torque needs to compensate the, for that work so that the whole robot arm is in static equilibrium. Everyone understood this logic? So imagine you add the weight. Weight is going to do some work. I don't want any work. Because I don't want this robot arm to move. So clearly, if I want to compensate for the work done by this downward force, I need to apply a torque. Everyone understood this? That is what it means.
Okay, now I'm going to derive this just for my own satisfaction. So just pay attention. So I'm going to look at the two act two axis robot arm. This is L1, this is L2, theta 1, this is theta 2. This is where the end effector is. This is the first joint. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to free the joint. So there are two hinges. This is hinge 1 and this is hinge 2. So first and foremost, and I'm going to separate out the joints. So first, we separate out this one. So I have and let's assume that here we have FX and F1. FX. Yeah, that's fine. And at this hinge, we have the X and then here is torque. Please note this angle is theta one. So this angle is going to be theta one plus theta two. And since I separated the second joint, I'm going to draw this second joint over here. And please note, action and reactions are equal and opposite. So there will be Bx, there will be By, and then there is going to be Ax and Ay. So this is joint A, this is joint B. And since there is tau here, so I'm going to call this tau 2. Since these two joints, they are part of 1. So here, we're going to have tau 2. And then here, I'm going to have tau 1. And don't worry, here is this hinge. So you have so once again, what I have drawn here is a free body diagram. What do we mean by free body diagram? Which means the links are separate from joints. So links are separate from joints. As soon as you separate out the links from the joints, virtual forces or internal forces will come in the picture. Please understand, if you look at that robot arm configuration, at joint B, at joint B, you do not have Vx and Vy because joint B is attached to this link. So which means the Vx that is going towards the right hand side is cancelled by Vy going towards the left hand side. Vy going up, this Vy is going down. Everyone understood this? One thing I want to show you here is I assume the direction of Vx and Vy. If I assume the wrong directions, at the end, the signs would tell me. But I looked at the external forces. These are the actual forces acting on the robot arm. Since Fy is going down, I assume Vy to go up so that Fy cancels out with Vy. Since Fx going towards left, I assume Bx going towards right, so this cancels out each other. But please understand, because of this, they form a couple and they, they are going to give a rotation. So this tau 2 is the torque given by motor at joint B. Tau 1 is the torque given by motor at joint A. Everyone understood this? And this is the hinge that is separated. And clearly, there is another short tau one that would cancel out this torque. So, what it means is I have separated out 
these joints and shown the forces and the moments that are acting on this joint. Everyone clear about this? Some of you who may not have mechanical background, probably for them, this will be like a refreshner. But what I have done is I have drawn the free body diagram. Everyone understood this? Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to apply summation of forces in x direction is equal to zero. When I do summation of forces in x direction is equal to zero, I get b x is equal to f x. Summation of forces in y direction is equal to zero. I get b y is equal to s y. Are you with me so far? Because b x is going towards right, f x is going towards left. By going up, Fy going down. And then I say summation of moment about V is equal to zero. Now, why do I have to take the moment about V? Because V is coming up. So, moment about Z. When I take moment about Z, then remember, curl your fingers in the direction of moment. If the thumb is pointing towards positive Z axis, the moment is positive. So, in this case, please understand. And I want to sort of draw a three dimensional figure. So this is my X. This is my Y. So X, Y, Z is coming out. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Sir, so if we have a load at the any factor, so what the force mean just the one direction at the end? No, I'm just assuming the force in F. So it could be force like at an angle, right? So it could be at an angle. So I'm just resolving Fx and Fy, just, just for the simplicity. So there could, F, Fy could be zero, Fx could be zero, or both could be zero. But just for the most general case, this is what it is. Summation of forces, uh, M, so Mz, I'm going to take moment about B. So if you look at the moment given by Fx, it is going to be Fx, this is L2, so summation of moment is going to be fx l2 sine theta theta 1 plus theta 2. So this is positive minus fy and this is going to be l2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. You agree with me? Everyone understands? So S theta 1 plus theta 2 is nothing but the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So what I'm saying is, this is the distance. This is the distance. And then this is the distance. Are you with me so far? Now, uh, and I have this external moment, curl your fingers in the direction of moment. This moment is positive, so I get tau 2. Are you with me? This is the first expression. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the first. Uh, this is for uh, L2. I'm going to do the same thing for L1. So, Again, if I do the for L1, clearly I have AX summation of forces in X direction is equal to zero. So AX is equal to BX summation of forces in Y direction is equal to zero. AY is equal to BY and summation of moment about Z is equal to zero. And this expression is so zero is equal to curl your fingers. So I have tau 1. Then I have plus dy. Uh, so this will be minus dy. This distance L1 cosine theta 1. L1 cosine theta 1. dx. L1 sine theta 1. Are you with me so far? So check this out. 
This distance is L1 cosine theta 1. This distance is L1 sine theta 1. Are you with me so far? So I have dy, I have dx. Curl your fingers in the direction of moment given by dy. At moment given by dy, L1 cosine theta 1 is negative. Dx, L1 sine theta 1 is positive. And also I have this tau 2. So I curl my fingers in the direction of tau 2. The tau 2 is like, uh, positive. Yeah. Are you with me so far? So now I want you to focus on these two equations. I have this equation one and I have this equation two. Okay, I have this equation one and I have this equation two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this big expression first, something like this. So tau one, second equation is equal to plus dy l1 cosine theta 1 minus dx l1 sine theta 1 minus tau 2. Are you with me so far? And tau 2, tau 2 comes from equation 1. This is going to be dy l1 cosine theta 1 minus dx l1 sine theta 1 tau 2 comes as plus fx l1 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 minus fy l2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. Are you with me? Now, dx and dy. Uh, dx and dy are given here. Can you see dx is equal to fx, dy is equal to fy. Do you agree with me? So, I can write this equation like tau1 is equal to fy L1 cosine theta 1 minus fx L1 sine theta 1 plus fx fx L1 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 minus fy L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. Are you with me so far? And I'm going to write the second equation, which is for tau 2. And we know the equation for tau 2 from here is minus fx L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 and plus fy L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. So what did I do? And I want to explain this step by step. So here, I drew the three body diagram. Everyone clear about the three body diagrams? Then I applied the conditions of equilibrium and find out, I found out the values of the reaction forces dx and dy. Do you agree with me? The only forces that are present in this entire structure is fx and fy. dx and dy, x and ay are internal forces. They do not exist. They exist in this case because we have freed the structure. We have freed the joint. As soon as I combine this guy with this guy, dy and dx will cancel each other. The external torques will cancel each other. Everyone understood this? Everyone understood this? Now, what I did, I applied summation of uh, uh, the equilibrium conditions and I found out what is the value, the moment about V is equal to zero. So 
So please understand Vx and Vy. Since we are going to this point, the moment given by these two forces is zero because the newer arc is zero. So only moments are given by Fx and Fy. So I found out the value of our tau two. Everyone understood this? Then I proceeded to link one. And in link one, I used the conditions of equilibrium. And then I took the moment about point A. Summation of moment about point A is zero. And that is given by this equation. Everyone understood this? And the rest is the mathematical regular. I substituted value of tau 2 from equation 1. I substituted the value of tau 2 from equation 1. Everyone understood this? And then I substituted what is the value of dy? What is the value of dx? Please note, dx is equal to fx, dy is equal to fy. Everyone understood this? And at the end, I got these two big equations. Are you with me? What is important? Yeah. For the tau one, I think it will be L2, right? Tau one is the first L1. This one? Yeah, L2. Yeah, correct. So I want you to understand what is happening here. Tau one and tau two are the torque given by motor one and motor two. Fx and Fy is nothing but the forces acting on the end effector. So what I want to do is, I want to find out the values of tau 1 and tau 2 given fx, fy and theta 1, theta 2. Can I solve that expression? I can. If somebody gives me the value of fx, somebody gives me value of fy, value of theta 1, value of theta 2, I can provide the values of tau 1 and tau 2. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write this expression something like this. This expression is tau 1 tau 2 is equal to a matrix multiplied by fx and fy. Are you with me so far? So this expression is going to become L2 sine Theta 1 plus theta 2 minus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. And this would be, we'll use a different color pen, minus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. And this expression here is going to be. Uh, Tau 2 is minus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2, and this would be L2 to sine theta 1 plus theta 2. So I better write this properly. Tau 1, tau 2 is equal to L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Minus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 minus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 minus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 and L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. And here, Fx. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to compare this equation. With the I don't know if you remember the equation for Jacobian, but I can rewrite it. Jacobian equation. We write the equation for the Jacobian. That will be right. Jacobian is equal to minus L2 sine. I think there's a sine error somewhere. Uh, yeah, here it is. It has to be negative. 
sine theta one plus theta two minus L one sine theta one. L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. And here it is minus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 and L2 Sign. Let me see. I think I made a mistake somewhere here. F y it multiply with uh, yeah if this this actually I made a mistake this is x x right this needs to this needs to come here l one minus l one times theta one times theta one times theta two and here it becomes l one the sign theta one minus L two for sign theta one equal one and L one for sign theta one. So if you see here, this guy is the Jacobian. <laughs> I think I made a small error in the mixture uh, when I took the derivative mixture that uh, I did those sign and same exercise. So, this is what is the method of virtual work. So, given the external values of forces, you can find out the torques at the joint. And this will be extremely useful when we are going to find out the dynamical equations of motion. So next part, uh, at this point, we have finished the dynamics. We have finished the static force analysis. And from next class onwards, we will start with the dynamics of the, the manifold. Everyone understood this? So I would encourage you to follow through this. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.